Hello, Chromates. This is a special episode where we look into the guts and glory of the game. I have pulled out some stats directly from the save files and want to show you what the strategy for the series was and will be and where we're going with it and what the impacts are of these ones. So if you're interested in this, stay by me. If not, uh, skip to the next episode. <laughs> so see ya. Okay, thank you for staying with me. <laughs> let's let's get into the meat. So you see here the threshold table, and um, I have talked about this one extensively and how I calculated the numbers in the last episode of the second season. I will link to it. I will also link to the charts which will come up, and uh, you can take a look at yourself and uh, get the precise numbers which precise dates um, I will talk about the bigger picture today and not about every small number but I hope you get some ideas how the game is developing how my save file is developing and what the game internally does a little bit more so today we will take a look first at the oil situation so we start by let me get a pencil <laughs> yes like this one. Okay. Nice color. Um, so we start to export uh, oil at the start of the season. And later on, we switch to uh, bitumen and fuel. And you see here the thresholds. These are monthly export thresholds. And if I reach the threshold uh, by 100%, so if I export, for example, uh, 350 tons of bitumen a month, the price will be changed by minus 5% of the given period, threshold period is 75 days, but it's very hard to really have a strong cause and effect, and we will see why in a minute. Um, coal ore, we also start to export uh, to reach our goal, and the goal is to push coal down. So the goal of the series is push the coal price down, and but we don't export coal, coal for example, because uh, you see here the threshold is higher, and which means we need to export more to reach the same effect as exporting less. <laughs> uh, sounds um, yeah, uh, sounds uh, quite easy, but yeah, that's the situation. And we need to process the coal. So if we process it, it loses half of the volume. So it's doubly hard. So we will not uh, export any coal. To further strategies, I have uh, pulled out some numbers which are interesting, and uh, I will talk about. Uh, these ones in the more strategic part of the game. Let's first see what my save game did the last 10 years. Okay, this is the first uh, graph we pulled out and it's quite easy to see uh, quite <laughs> a quite strong effect and uh, what inflation does. So this one on bottom is the price of foreign workforce of rubles. And this is very important. Uh, it's one of the stable curves in the game, uh, which always keeps inflating and it inflates away by 6%. Mm. I'm sorry for painting, but painting with the mouse is awful, so uh, I <laughs> bear with me. And the other one is here, for example, food. And you see the pla uh, not food, plants, uh, so it's crops in the game. And you see here, you start to have some instabilities, uh, like here, for example. Uh, the curve is not straight anymore, like this one here. So you, we have a straight curve here. And here, the game starts to do some random shenanigans. But this is uh, <laughs> really quite stable regarding to game. Uh, it has the same inflation. And uh, the price of workforce is related somehow to this one. So uh, the workforce inflates away the price of crops. And the price of crops are basically calculated on how much workforce you need. And if you, for example, start to produce food, the food price is also uh, added to the workforce is added and the price of crops are added and it will inflate. Um, yeah, that's the basic situation. That's the mechanic of the game. I'm sure you know it, but now we will come to the interesting part, like what my game did, and we will start with oil. Okay. So, we see a little bit more here on this chart. On the left side, this is the price of ruble here. Uh, 
for, for example, um, the price of ruble for purchase price of oil. I only look at the purchase price, not at the sale price, because the purchase price and sale price are always linked together. They are quite uh, similar. Uh, all the percentage between them is like 20% uh, lower purchase, uh, lower sale price than purchase price. It's normal. If you buy a car, you have to pay more than if you sell a car after that one. Next one is the base price of oil. And this is um, in the stats files. This is not the stats.ini files in the safe game folder. This is not in game. You never, you don't find it in game. It's what the game uses to determine the base price of your products. And these base prices are for all raw products, not for manufactured products. Manufactured co products are uh, refined from these base prices. Uh, and the game does not need it. The game ju just needs the base prices and calculates the rest from it. But it's quite important because we will see some effects for this one. Then we have these areas here, like this one, um, which is raw oil and fuel and bitumen. So these are the areas for exports and these areas are here on the right side. These are the tons per month. So if you look at this one, for example, this is one one monthly export ton accumulated. Uh, we have here like, let's say, 650 tons in this month. If you click on the link on my comments, you can click on the chart and you can hover over it and it will show you the exact number. But uh, the bigger picture is more important than the exact number. Uh, what we also can see in this chart is uh, these spikes here, for example. Here is a spike and here is a spike. And these spikes are world events. And the world events, you can see exactly how long they take. Um, I cannot tell you at the moment because I'm painting here, <laughs> not in, in the graph, but um, these are around uh, two months. And uh, we can clearly see that there are world events because the base price here and here does not change in the same way. So at other occasions, for example, like here, uh, they are both moved together. And, uh, but at the moment uh, here, they don't move together. So only the current market price changes, but not the base price. Let me remove this because I want to not have to mess up too much. Okay, so, good. So what does the price do? Um, you can see here in the first um, start, as here nearly nothing happens and the price uh, slightly increases, but then we have a period of stability and a short bump, but mostly it goes down afterwards. For my, and uh, it corresponds, but it's not clearly related to my export activity. So my export activity is, as you see here, around 900 tons a month uh, in this area. And um, the game, this is half of the half of the threshold, so the price impact should be not super high. Uh, it should be still measurable, but the oil price is volatile in itself. The game simulates market, market activity, global activity, and uh, compared to the crop price, for example, the, uh, um, the oil price is super volatile. Okay, then we have a period we have quite stability, and then we have a little period which can be accounted to my activity, mm, maybe. So it's this activity here, where I created a refinery, and while I'm pumping up my own fuel storages and bitumen storages, my oil export went to zero. So the prices had some time to recover. At the same time, after the refinery is online, maybe you can see small price changes, but not so massive. All in all, we come to an activity of stability again, <laughs> if you can call it. Uh, I just look at the curves and uh, try to find the average uh, eyeballing it. Um, you can draw your own conclusion. If you disagree, it's completely fine. Um, and then we have a phase where the price goes down. And um, this one is also what the goal for coal is. Um, we want to force the game to lower the prices. And it's a combination of my activity, I think, and the game activity decided to change the prices. Do you see here, for example, um, compared to the starting price, 
is uh, here's 50. I'm drawn over it. I'm sorry. The starting price is uh, like here between this one, like 35. And if you compare it 10 years later, um, inflation has done nothing good to it. So it's um, around 25. So it's around 30 here, this price, for example. Um, so we see no inflation effects. The inflation effect is the difference between the base price, which the game calculates, and this here. There's a stable inflation effect. If you see how how long, how much space is between this one and this one, and if you compare to the start of the whole, where, where do I have something? So here, this difference is way smaller. So the uh, purchase price of oil and the base price of in-game of the hidden stat base price of oil um, goes uh, is uh, farther apart, and this is the inflation curve. We have calculated the difference price, and if we calculate the difference price, we get a stable inflation curve like this one. So uh, just to calculate the differences, not anything else. Uh, even though the prices are very jumping up and down, but the price we have calculated is quite stable. So uh, this one is uh, how the prices differ. But okay. Um, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, it's completely fine. I think uh, it's hard to explain, but uh, just to keep you <laughs> keep your super statistic nerds on on track. <laughs> um, yeah. So what do we conclude of this one? Mm, we see some some price changes. Uh, we see some export activity, and we are dropping all in all the, coal uh, the oil price, even though I'm not trying too hard. My refinery is all only running at 20%. So um, this is not uh, super, super uh, the goal of the... Maybe I should uh, call out the goal to l lower oil price, but it's also not so entertaining, because uh, with coal we have a bigger room to play. So what does our coal do? Okay. Uh, again, we have the coal purchase price, which you see in-game and at the border. Then we have the raw coal purchase price, also at the border. And then we have the ominous base price, which the game uses. And you see again here, for example, here's a market event and the base price didn't change. Uh, this always. But the market event also translates from raw coal to coal and on the other way around. Like, for example, this market event also. You see here a dip in raw coal and a dip in coal. So the lower one is raw coal, upper one coal. Yeah. Uh, I get the export price in ruble here and the uh, exported tonnage here on this side. And you see here we exporting a tonnage of around 4,000 tons a month after we started, after five years in-game. What this one is here, this is a steel import. I, I've i pulled steel import also to this graph just to see if there's some relationship. Um, okay, and I cannot see a very hard relationship. Maybe you see it. <laughs> I don't want to interpret something which isn't there. So I give you only uh, hard findings and it's confusing enough, so yeah. But steel imports are here, the lower one. Uh, this one is 400 tons of imports, which is uh, the full threshold, but I don't see a strong correlation in these upper curves. Um, but we will see if uh, we can do something with the mechanical components, for example. Okay, so how do the prices develop? Um, the first, if you look at our curves, uh, broadly, in a broad sense, uh, we have a stability phase, then we have an uprising phase, and I have no idea why. Um, I have done nothing special here to uh, push up the prices from 20 to over 30 rubles. Um, but the game decided to, hey, comrade, <laughs> let's have some higher prices. And then we have again a quite stable phase, a little uprise. And uh, then we have a little, but it's only minute downward trend it's uh, way i hope it would be more <laughs> honestly speaking um, but again working with inflation so uh, if you watch here by 10 rubles and uh, raw coal price it went over 10 rubles here for some good amount of period of time and we pushed it back to 10 rubles and this is all because inflation the base price here inflates away so this one spreads out it goes up by inflation. It wants to go up. Uh, if you compare it, for example, to, let's say, 
the difference in here it is smaller this one is smaller than this one and it's because inflation kicks in and uh, rises the base price and also uh, rises the call price so this one is also rise by inflation yeah and just goes up so what i hope to see is if i start to uh, quadruple this one by four times uh, i want to see a bigger price impact honestly and i want to see this price going constantly down um, and then we are succeeding if not we have some problems <laughs> but yeah uh, this one we will see in the next five or ten years how uh, our new coal reservoir will kick in and kick out so to talk about a little bit about the strategy so this is a situation we have the cost of foreign workers of ruble for example which is stable and it goes up six percent oh six percent um goes up and uh we are exporting raw coal which means the prices are lowering down and because we are exporting raw coal also our coal prices are influenced and they also go slightly down or at least uh, go down with uh, with inflation uh, compared to inflation they are going down even though the prices are stable if inflation kicks in it your prices are stable you are lowering the prices but we will not export any coal uh, because of the bespoken thresholds and um, the next phase in our strategy was that we extended this one to steel so uh, we pushed we exported raw coal like uh, 4k a month and uh, again everything is relied on the cost of workers in the internal game calculations and we drive this price down and uh, because of that we are driving this price down and because of that also the steel price is driven down and i don't want to have a effect where it goes backwards so if steel influences coal which is also not super clear could be cannot be but if steel imp uh, um influences coal price i would work against myself so we are creating our our own steel but not exporting it and we also have some options uh, further on top of the steel iron is there but it's not uh, so important for this series it's simply uh, another part of steel which we shouldn't forget um, so what can we do what are the tools uh, where we can expand let's go to the next slide and now so the plan for our raw call is again everything relies on the four workers um, the plan for the uh, raw call is export 16,000 tons of coal a month which should be possible and it should be made by the next coal uh, reservoir which is nearly finished and uh, we will push down the coal price even further so yeah this will come um, the next thing is with coal we do anything directly so uh, we leave coal alone and hopefully we will push the price down by osmosis <laughs> yeah um, steel we produce for ourselves but we will not export but we can do something nice for example uh, here we can produce cars and also we can produce mechanical components in the future which maybe will pay out because the thresholds of exports are fairly slow uh, small and maybe the mechanical components can spiral down to coal and spiral down uh, to push down our prices next thing which is in very near future is uh, the next project for my construction industry which is exporting massive amounts of energy so energy is has uh, three things in it uh, which is possible in the game also a little bit wind energy but let's not, not talk about that uh, we have energy made out of coal out of fuel and out of uh, nuclear energy and um, i think the influence of coal and energy is quite uh, high and significant so we will see what happens if we export a massive amounts of energy this will be the next project and also a project will be to export bricks because creating bricks is quite easy it is 100% uh, uh, made out of uh, coal here and um, 
we can produce a lot of bricks to crash the threshold. This will be a question for for future, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. And that's the broad, energy, uh, broad uh, strategy for the future. Um, to get a whole picture of the situation. So we have our raw coal dealt with, we have our coal dealt with, we have our steel dealt with. Maybe we will uh, build a second steel mill to export mechanical components here. And um, all other stuff which relies on coal here is not so interesting for us. So uh, we would not care, for example, about cement. Cement is uh, made out of coal and um, gravel uh, does not interest us. The same uh, prefab panels is made of cement and gravel, but uh, this, these are too, too far away to really have a good cause and effect. So we will export energy. Um, it's on the way and we will export bricks and we will see what happens. All other products, which are, for example, crops or I don't know what, uh, other consumer goods are uh, uh, not in our focus. Maybe, 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 maybe in some far future, we will find a way to influence the price of, uh, of the foreign workforce. I don't think so and I don't know. But if we manage to influence the price via these products here, for example, the price goes down, then we will influence every other uh, thing in the chain everything and uh, this would be a very interesting thing if we managed to do this um, but like I said um, I highly doubt it and it will be uh, a research topic for, for late game stage not for our current stage our current stage is um, quadruple raw coal and uh, see what energy and bricks do this is the uh, strategy for the next 10 years okay to close it and uh, recap this is the threshold thing it's, it's the be and be all and, and all so uh, we have stopped exporting um, oil we are exporting this and this stuff for money we uh, st export uh, rock oil like 4,000 tons and we want to go to 16,000 tons and uh, maybe to 32,000 tons a month or even more we will see what the future brings um, we will not export any coal we will export uh, bricks in the future and also um, energy we will not export any steel but we could in a mid-term export mechanical components because the threshold is really slow and uh, these are 100 percent made out of steel so it should have an impact somewhere somehow we will see these are nice products and uh, we can isolate cause and effect so comment <laughs> thank you for staying here everyone who has gone uh, i see at an analytics <laughs> uh, for what is worth it but yeah that's that's a point which is interesting for me um, exporting more is a nice goal which i never pursued at the uh, uh, to deliberately crash the prices and we will see how the season develops and have fun watching the next uh, planning episodes and the uh, next construction session which will be on the way and i see you soon and enjoy your weekend bye